Welcome back, everyone. Uh, this is going to be the second in our ISO 20022 series, where we talk about the timelines. Now, as I said before in my previous video, uh, which uh, this is a one second of a three part series that you should go check out the previous one if you haven't, um, where we talk about the introduction of what ISO 20022 is, as well as SWIFT and some other factors and catching people up to speed. Uh, but as I, again, as I said in my previous one, I don't believe that there's going to be a giant sw flip the switch moment. Uh, that being said, I think there's going to be some pretty significant moments that we can keep track of and that we can align to. Now, that being said, no one should buy anything based off of what I say. Uh, I'm purely a process improvement guy who's trying to, who looks at the crypto space through an eye of, you know, those it's going to revolutionize technology in the world and make people's lives easier in general, if, as long as it solves a problem. When it comes to ISO 2022, a lot of cryptos are going to be doing that, obviously. Um, but again, as I alluded to in my previous video, what I'm trying to get to is that I believe there's going to be uh, a moment where like a lot of lights turn on and it's like looking at a city and you see a little, a few lights turn on over here and you see a couple lights then turn on over there and, um, and all of a sudden, you know, different lights start coming on all over the city and all of a sudden the, the, uh, city is all lit up and it looks very beautiful at night. Just, you know, if you like a beautiful nighttime cityscape at least. And so that's kind of the, how I depict ISO 20022 is that it's going to come on in these spurts. Different people are going to come on at different times. But I believe in terms of the U.S., I think there's a pretty good plan here in terms of what I'm about to show you. And there may even be a couple dates that you may be interested in. Uh, so we'll take a look at the overall plan and uh, some of the testing here. Of course, appreciate if you like uh, the video and, uh, you know, subscribers are always welcome. Thank you for those who do. And if you find this interesting, you know, sharing it with other content creators or people in the community is always appreciated. So this is the Federal Reserve uh, website, and we're going to be looking at Fedwire uh, Fund Services ISO 20022 Testing Requirements and Key Milestones. So, of course, the Fed is going to be where I'm going to be looking for, you know, compliance in terms of, you know, SWIFT may handle the entire world, as we looked at in the previous video. Um, but in terms of the Fed, I think that, you know, this is another level of use and requirements that I think that will be very uh, integral, of course, into the U.S. system. And, you know, since we're lagging, might be the final date for many uh, things to come. Uh, so with that being said, it is it says here the Federal Reserve Banks will provide three ISO 20022 testing environments to help ensure that the Fedwire Fund Service community is well prepared. And I know you're probably asking, um, James, why are we not why are we talking about the Fedwire services as opposed to FedNow? Well, FedNow is a new service that's being uh, created. And I believe Fedwire has been around for a while because it's, you know, a wire, probably like a wire transfer, if I had to guess. And uh, that is has to be compliant by that time. So uh, compliant for what? The single day ISO 20022 implementation on March 10th, 2025. Now we knew that uh, the standards were being pushed back to 2025 in order to become compliant. Well, uh, it appears that March 10th would be that actual cutoff date, which I'm not I haven't necessarily heard uh, from other sources yet. So very interesting. Um, and again, maybe I missed it if it's out there. Maybe some of the UISO people are like, hey, it's been there a long time. But hey, this first I've seen it like in writing and it's good that it's on a government website that I can trust, not just some article out of nowhere. Um, that being said, it this could be that day where we see the U.S.'s lights fully turn on uh, in the in the uh, metaphor of the cityscape I was turn, uh, talking about uh, previously. It also says in the coming months, we will publish an industry readiness dashboard. So that means that we will have a dashboard that we can see how compliant these different um, banks are with uh, and these different providers that are going to be involved with the Fedwire program. So I wonder if we can draw correlations between um, what, how ready things are, as well as some of the testing that's being done to maybe what's happening on the charts at different times. So um, let me know what your thoughts are below on that. But I mean, I think that that readiness dashboard could be a really good leading indicator in terms of, you know, price and what's going on and what's not going on. 
Um, it might just be another variable to look at, but who knows? Uh, you never know what's going to happen, but I think that could provide some transparency into the readiness of these different uh, industries. So I haven't found anyone or anywhere else that's going to give us a readiness dashboard. So uh, who knows? That being said, these are the different kinds of testing, whether it be depository institution testing, my standards readiness portal, uh, what have you. These are the kinds of testing that basically says that everyone that who participates or is a bank or corporate credit union or has volume above such and such that they all need to mandatory basically do all this testing and that it's optional for participants that have a service provider and do not have their own Fedline direct connection. So if someone's being provided services, these are optional um, or not applicable. Now, it basically says the same thing down here for different kinds of testing, blah, 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 blah. Let's look at the timeline. So these are, the diff again, the different kinds of testing. There's a self-service portal uh, that's supposed to be available by March 2023. There's a depository institution testing that is, is uh, functionality testing between peer-to-peer testing and peer testing, sorry. There's some comprehensive application uh, functionality testing and peer testing uh, in 2024. So uh, this actually availability doesn't start for uh, Q4 2023. So March 2023 is when the self-service portal is available. But testing for ISO 20022 with the Fed doesn't start until uh, Q4 2023. Now, since Fed Now is supposed to launch in July, I wonder how this service will be affected, or maybe you know all of this testing will just be thrown to the wayside with Fed Now. Who knows? More research to come in the future. So, uh, and apparently, uh, this Saturday production testing, whenever they have, they're supposed to be able to do. Fedwire application interface manual, uh, which is a format to practice backout procedures. So I guess if something goes wrong, they can go back to their uh, previous standards. And so that Saturday testing is actually supposed to start in January or February of 2025. Like, hey, just in case things go wrong, let's have a backout procedure. All right, good. Um, but I don't know why they wait till February or January of 2025. Uh, especially when the March 10th is the final date, supposedly. Uh, but who knows? Uh, the rest of this information is just talking about the different kinds of testing and when the sign-up is. I mean, the sign-up for uh, the testing for the depository institution testing doesn't even start until Q3 of 2023. Um, what's another date? April 2024. Uh, is whenever they get uh, they need to be certified in some way. Service provider and software vendors need to be certified by that time, uh, I believe, to start some of this testing. Uh, there's the attestation requirements. There's the uh, operational readiness testing. Uh, they need to be, uh, it says 2024 testing schedule for FIAM or ORTs. Uh, FIAM is, and the ORTs are kind of defined over here, uh, to be published in late 2023. So that we don't even have the standards for some of this uh, backout testing until 2023 or the end of it. And then of course the infrastructure related tests, um, there doesn't seem to be any requirements on it. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Product test and production in Q1 2025. So you kind of get where the timeline is going. We have the self-service management that's kind of aligning to that uh, March 20th date-ish, possibly, uh, that we talked about in the previous video. And then we have what appears to be a large amount of testing in 2024. Um, and then we have uh, different, I guess, rollback procedures and backout procedures for 2025. Uh, I hope you found this helpful. Again, this is just the US side of things as we saw in the previous video, like the Bank of England, for example, is trying to be ready by 2024. Uh, who knows what Japan and other places are doing uh, and how quickly they might move to be ISO 20022 compliant. Um, 
But again, I thought this was just showed one part, and maybe we can put all the pieces together between the community about when the different lights in the city uh, in the metaphor will come on. And maybe we'll see different um, see different effects on the price chart because of that. Uh, let me know what you thought of this. And if you found it helpful, uh, this was just a piece of insight that I wanted to share with the community. Uh, and who knows if this, la this will be the last and final date uh, for the uh for all the city to come online well maybe the us will be that last that last part everyone's been waiting on you know that eyesore in the middle of the city like hey what's taking you so long uh but again let me know your thoughts in the comments below i'm jtxrp and i'm out